Alright guys, welcome to Amaz's Death Knight fan concept, where uh, I also updated the Death Knight concept class to include BRM and um, TT cards. So um, let's review the whole concept as a whole, and uh, you guys can let me know what you guys think about it in uh, Twitch chat right now, because I'm streaming, or in the YouTube comments below as well. So what did I come up with for Death Knights? Well, what are Death Knights in WoW? So they're powerful melee warriors, and they also cast a lot of magic. So they're kind of like a mixture and a hybrid kind of thing. So hopefully um, these spells do reflect it. Um, obviously every class needs an identity. So um, with Death Knights, it seems like minion death mattering makes a very, very logical sense. So um, we also introduced a new word that's Requiem, and we're going to explain how that works um, as well. Um, and also, I guess the playstyle, they're kind of like you know, a mixture of Paladin and Warrior, right? So they have a lot of premium removal, they have a lot of big stuff, they also have a lot of weapons and stuff like that. And of course, we'll also, um, you know, f force that in with like, uh, well, not force that in, but weave that in with the sacrifice um, theme. So here we go. Uh, Arthas is the um, Death Knight hero, and the hero part is Raise Dead. It summons a 1-1 ghoul of charge that dies at the end of the turn. And you were saying, oh, it's just like the mage hero power, right? And it doesn't go even past taunts. It might be really bad. But it actually has a lot of synergy with other cards that is going to come, uh, that we're going to show. That So hopefully you remember that once again. The ghoul dies after at the end of turn. So even if you charge the face, you don't get a 1-1. So you cannot smoke your opponent and just continue making like, you know, a army of ghouls that never die. Well, unless you do something else, right? So that's the hero power. Uh, we also need to explain the Requiem as well. Requiem is a keyword that occurs whenever another friendly minion dies. So as you can see here, here's an example. If Requiem was actually in the game, the Cult Master would be changed to Requiem draw a card. So it's like much cleaner text because there's a lot of uh, definite, um, there's a lot of definite cards that have this effect. So uh, rather than just say whenever one of your minion dies, blah blah blah, blah we just say Requiem, draw a card. Not very very simple. And of course, these are the notes that it doesn't activate during it. It, act, it doesn't activate on its own death, and it also activates on your opponent's turn as well. So let's go ahead and go over to the first drop. It is the Shadow Ghoul. All right, uh, it's a one mana one one, so it's uh, another one one that we have. But hey. If something else dies when this is on the field, it becomes a 3-4, so pretty much a spider tank. Uh, the monstrosity is there. Uh, it's a token, so you can't actually like craft it or anything. But yeah, um, this is the main drop. So I guess, what is the dream? The dream is like, well, you play this a turn 3, you use this, and then you use hero power, it turns into a 3-4. Um, so it's just uh, like pretty much a spider tank that deals 1 damage in a sense. Um, what's the super dream? The super dream is you play 2 shadow goals at turn 2, and then you hero power, and then you get 2 3-4s. Now that is really the super dream, right? Um, can be very risky if you play this a turn 1. You could play this a turn 1 against classes that can't deal with it, so like priest or something. So, um, you know, that's a very... It's, it's a one drop. Another one drop is kind of weird. Uh, it, it doesn't... It doesn't feel like it fits yet, but uh, with the other cards, we'll see. Um, it might be really, really cool. Uh, the Skeletal Betrayer is a one mana 0-2. At the end of your turn, deal 2 damage to your hero. But when you play this on your hand in Battle Cry, you give control of this minion to your opponent. So your opponent has this kind of uh, ticking time bomb that um, they have to deal with. Now, uh, counters to this card is very simple, you know, you can actually buff it up and you, it's actually a minion for you. You can also like give it taunt, right? Um, you can also like make... The tokens are actually pretty useful for like Savage Roar stuff. You can eat it with like Void Terror. So there are a lot of counters to this. But um, yeah, it's uh, kind of like a ticking time bomb for your opponent. And of course, when you play this card yourself, you're not establishing any minions. So it might be a very niche deck that um, this card uses. But um, giving your opponent minions is going to be a theme throughout the whole set. Uh, with this Iceborne Lich, a 2 mana 2-4, two, it's a very... Um, it's a bit above the curve, right? Unfortunately, when you play this, you give your opponent a 1-1. One, one. So you summon a 1-1 one, one for your opponent. So effectively, if the 1-1 one, one trades, or you trade for the 1-1, one, one, it doesn't matter. It's a 2 mana 2-3. Two, um, the power that comes from this card is that it comes from you're giving your opponent a minion, and we will actually find out why that is actually a pretty important mechanic. Another two mana drop is the Scourge Keeper. 
Uh, it's a mini Dr. Broom where it summons two zero and acolytes, and acolytes actually do nothing. It's a zero mana zero one. Um, so you're just summoning tokens. Uh, tokens are going to be kind of like a bread and butter for most of your cards uh, because there are some cards that, you know, get more get more effect from uh, from tokens. And of course, if you have a Requiem effect on the field and your opponent um, and your opponent AoEs, then Requiem can proc a lot. So for example, like Scourge Keeper here, and then you have like a buffed up Cult Master for some reason. Uh, they cannot AoE your board because Acolytes are gonna draw a few cards. Um, you can also use Acolytes to, for the Nerubian Devourer. It's a 3 mana 2-3, uh, a little bit understated. But if uh, you can Battlecry, destroy a friendly minion and gain plus 2, plus 2. So what does that mean? You can actually play Scourge Keeper on turn 2 and then devour one of your Acolytes for a 4-5. You can also look, use your Hero Power, right? You can also Hero Power and then eat the Ghoul afterwards, after you pretty much charge the face because you can't trade. You have to target a friendly minion it's a four it's a five mana four five in that point so um yeah um if priest had this card well that's pretty good of shadow madness right but unfortunately it's a definite class only so um yeah at the worst case i think it's just a five mana four five that deals one damage well you have to deal one damage to the face so there you go that's the card we also have a four drop the dark subjugator so once again requiem it, when another minion d dies, you give another random friendly minion plus one plus one. So it's a four mana three four. So the body is not is a little bit um, below the stat line, but the effect is quite strong if you manage to have three minions or more. Because if there's only one other minion with Dark Subjugator and that dies, it actually does nothing because it can never buff itself. It has to buff something else. So uh, it does require that you have a board. Another four mana drop is the Onslaught Rider. It has Oh, the token is a... Uh, that, that was a mis mistake there. But um, it is Taunt, and whenever another thing dies, it gains one attack. So it keeps on growing very, very slowly. Um, the fact that it has Taunt is obviously very relevant because Hunters can't really kill you anymore. And if your hero part keeps on trading with their, you know, one health minions, then, you know, maybe your Onslaught Rider can, um, you know, build up to a pretty big creature. So um, this is pretty much your common bread and butter as well the blood cavalier is a five mana four five so it's just like uh pretty much any four fives you would see a yeti but when it dies you summon two blood worms for your opponent and blood worms as you can see on the side is that at the start of the turn they actually bite your opponent for one damage and of course being in your opponent's board means a number of things right it means that your opponent can buff them up uh your opponent can't usually interact with it so that's pretty strong if it's on your board obviously they can interact with it if it's on their board they have different kinds of interaction but yeah um that's if, if your opponent doesn't want to have blood worms then they have to make the blood cavalier they have to make this mini stay alive so it's a four or five that keeps on like you know pressuring your opponent so that might be really strong here we have the ebon champion and that this is exactly why you want your enemy minions to um have stuff you have uh it's a battle cry Gain plus one plus one for each enemy minion on the battlefield. So it's kind of like a reverse Frostwolf Warlord. And it's a bit uh, more expensive as well. So if your opponent has like, I don't know, four minions. It's a six mana nine nine. Uh, you can compare it to like Dracon and Crusher. So um, it can get, get really, really big. And it only needs like one minion pretty much to get a six six. And um, from what we see in Hearthstone, like a six mana six six is totally fine. Especially in Arena as well, right? So pretty good Arena card. Uh, maybe not constructed because usually boards are very cleared. But um, if you give this taunt against like, I don't know, like a token deck, it could be very, very strong. We got the Rotting a Frost Giant. So a Frost Giant costs 12, and the Rotting Frost Giant also costs 12. It costs one less for each minute that died this game. Uh, so it's kind of like comparable to the Frost Giant from Handlock. If you have a lot of things that die a lot, and if you're facing against token decks, then this might become really, really cheap. But um, you can't really play this at turn 4 or turn 5, right? You need like 7 things to die to play this at turn 5. 7 things dying is a very, very optimistic. So uh, you definitely have to build around this deck a little bit. But it's pretty much like a Frost Giant. If you compare it to Frost Giant and Handlock, you can abuse it somehow. There's definitely a way to abuse it. And of course, the first legendary in the classic set is Terran Gorfin. Kind of Malganis stat line. And uh, whenever another minion dies, you get... A copy of it in your hand so it's very very draw heavy um 
you might... So basically, with this card, you want Battle Cries, right? Because if it's Death Rattles or whatnot, you want to play Kel'Thuzad instead because they come back to life and they play it immediately. So Battle Cries would be really, really good. Chargers might be really, really good as well. And um, yeah, it's a pretty big thing by itself. Does they have BJs though? And well, most legendaries gets BJs, so that's completely fine. Moving on to the spells for the classic set, we have Anti Magic Shell, of course. Zero mana card, give a minion the uh, Fairy Dragon effect until the start of your next turn. So uh, if you want to make a minion, you know, survive, uh, then you can place this. So for example, uh, you know, example would be playing on the Ragnaros. Your opponent can't execute it. Your opponent can't shield slam it. Uh, even if it's only for a turn, it might be worth it to um, have one card, one of these, you know, just for like a tech card, maybe. Death Coil is a split between a um, backstab and a uh, ancestral healing. You either deal two damage to a minion or an enemy minion, and if it's a friendly minion instead, you actually restore it to full health. So you can't use this to ping off your own creatures because your creatures are always friendly minions, right? Um, you can't, it can't go face, so it's kind of, yeah, once again, it's a split between backstab, um, that doesn't, uh, it's not the undamaged text, or ancestral, uh, ancestral healing, yeah. So, yeah, it's a one mana card. Dark Simulacrum is an epic because it's kind of weird in that it copied the last spell your opponent played and put it in your hand. So you don't need to play it immediately, and, um, you know, your opponent plays Flame Strike for 7, well, you can play a Flame Strike for 8. Albeit it not might be as good as playing Flex 7. Um, the power of this card comes from the flexibility. You can always like make sure your opponent, you know, um, you, you can kind of like uh, modify what you can get from your opponent. Now, if you're playing against a Death Knight, you always want to cast a bad spell at the end of your turn. So uh, this actually changes up the game mechanics a little bit, which I really really like. So um, instead of say. Instead of say lay on hand equality and then well, you always play lay on hands right? But if you play lay on hands and then something else, then your opponent cannot get lay on hands. So um, playing around this spell is definitely pretty cool. Here's another bread and butter spell, the Death Pact. Destroy a friendly minion and then restore two health to your hero and draw two cards as well. So once again, remember the hero power is summon a one one ghoul, right? So in the worst case scenario, it's a 4 mana draw 2 cards and restore 2 health to your hero, right? After charging with your ghoul, of course, uh, to the face. Uh, better way to do this would be um, using this on things that you spawn, right? So something like the Scourge Keeper that we just saw for 2 mana. You can also use it with the Imp Master. Um, you know, stuff that, that that's really, really powerful if um, you can actually use it without your hero power. Because 2 mana draw 2 is pretty strong. We already know that draw mana draw 2 might not be, like, overpowered because of, like, ancestral knowledge being 2 mana. Actually, a better example would be Battle Rage. It's a 2 mana draw million cards, right? So, um, this does have the requirement that you need a friendly minion. Gives a little health for those, you know, classes that really, really go aggressively. We got the blood boil for two mana as well. You give a minion plus one plus one, and it gets so angry that its blood basically spills out and uh, damages everything else. So kind of like a mini whirlwind, and you get an extra buff out of it. You also kind of uh, choose which minion does not get whirlwinded. So that's pretty good in that in the fact in, in that sense. It is a two mana card though, so uh, not um, not as cheap as whirlwind, but uh, hopefully it can blow some things up. Asphyxiate is the 3 mana removal spell for Death Knight. You silence a minion and change its attack to 0. So once again, you're trying to make your opponent's board uh, really really weak, right? Give them a lot of bad creatures, uh, you know, asphyxiate their creatures, and then for example play the Ebon Champion and it gets really really powerful. So um, your opponent, um, if they don't have a way to actually utilize 0 X's, like 0 8's, 0 10's or whatnot, then um, well, this is basically a Hex. So, um, yeah, it's basically a hex if you can treat it that way, but they still get the health buff. And of course, the funny thing is, if they silence the effect of this, then they get the minion back, right? So, if, if for example, you asphyxiate a Ragnaros, it becomes a 0-8. But they can actually owl it, and it becomes an 8-8 again, because the other, the next, the second effect, it's like a buff as well, right? So, um, silence counters this card, really enough. Outbreak! Um, for 4 mana, is also a removal spell. You force a minion to deal its damage to itself. So, uh, like 
like a betrayal, it actually procs stuff like um, Emperor Cobra. So if you use this on Emperor Cobra, it deals damage to itself and it dies because it has the poison effect. But um, good, good um, spell to remove um, minions that are kind of like symmetrical in the stats, right? So 8-8s, eight you have 5-5s uh, five fives and stuff like that. Um, and it's also targetable, so, you know, a conditional assassinate is what we have here. Kingslayer? Oh, baby, it's 3 mana card, deal damage to a character equal to the number of enemy minions. So if your opponent has 7 minions, oh my god, you can deal 7 damage to whatever you want. How about 2? But, uh, of course, it, you compare this to a Shadow Bolt, right? So it has to have, your opponent has to have, have, to have at least 4 minions for this card to make sense. Well, you think it's actually quite hard because, you know, sometimes your opponent just plays like, you know, big creatures and whatnot. But with the variety of um, summon minions for your opponents, then maybe you can actually combo this as well. Remorseless Winter is a 4 mana spell. Do 3 damage to a minion and the enemy hero, then freeze them both. It's kind of like a double frostbolt, but one has to go face and one has to go to a minion. So, for example, if your opponent has no minions, you can actually not cast this spell because you have to. This only targets a minion, right? And then it also targets the enemy hero. So, there you go. It's a very strong Cobra Shot, but Cobra Shot is not played anyways. And uh, strictly stronger cards are already in the game, so. Might be a tech spell that you might want to use, might not be. And the file, the signature the file. Oh my goodness. The AoE spell for Death Knight is a five mana spell. You deal damage to all enemy minions equal to the number of enemy minions. So if your opponent has five creatures, you five across the board for five mana. That is really, really good. So once again, you do want to summon things for your opponent, right? Um it's a lightning storm, it doesn't deal damage to the face, and uh, death rattle is still trigger, and it's a more expensive consecrate. If your opponent has only has one um, one of these, then it's kind of awkward. If you want to kill your opponent, this doesn't really do the job. But hey, against Zoo, I would love to hit 7 for everything. Horn of Winter! Uh, the 6 mana spell of freeze all enemy minions and draw a card for each enemy minion. Kind of like a Frost Nova, and also attaches a card draw to it. Uh, if you if you Horn of Winter three creatures, you Frost Nova and you Nourish at the same time. Although this card is definitely baked into a single card, so um, you might have to try and find value. And of course, you don't establish anything the turn you play this. It might be very clunky. Frost Nova. If you play Frost Nova, you can also play it with another creature at like later turns. Horn of Winter probably soaks up your entire turn, but um, yeah, might be really good for the stall decks. Uh, and it is your card draw for Death Knights. Uh, besides Death Pact, so another option. And the signature Army of the Dead, of course, is summon 7 one, 1 Ghouls with Charge that die after they attack. So once they attack, they perish. And this is, uh, you know, you don't. Ha there's no Savage Roar or anything like that in Death Knights, but um, this actually activates Requiem, which is really, really strong, right? The Ghouls die after they attack. And, um, you know, if you have something like, I don't know, like a Dark Subjugator and every, t every time something dies, something else gets plus one, plus one. Well, basically, you double the effect of Army of the Dead. And, of course, if you really want to be cute and use the combo, you can play a Raid Leader and then Army of the Dead for 12 damage. I'm not really sure if that's really relevant or all, but, um, you know, something to do here. You always want to, like, buff these up. You want to abuse this card somehow. It's a 7 mana deal 7. Alright, uh, back to the two weapons that we have. We have Soul Cleaver for the first one, 3 mana 2-2. Two, two. Whenever you kill a min minion with this weapon, you draw a card. So kind of like Arcane Intellect Plus, where you actually get to deal some damage as well. Um, very, very strong weapon, but you need to kill something with it. You can't just strike with it and draw a card. So, yeah, pretty strong against certain decks like Hunter, for example. You kill the Knife Juggler, draw a card. Pretty, pretty sick. And of course, we have Frostmourne. Who could actually do a definite concept of Frostmourne? 8 mana, 5, 3. Uh, comparable to Tyrion, right? Tyrion gives you a body and then summons the weapon for you. You summon the weapon immediately. And every time a minion dies on your board, you gain plus 1 attack. So this could get really, really powerful. How about if turn 8 Frostmourne for 5 damage? And then turn 9, you play Army of the Dead, right? Hit them for 7, use your hero part, hit them for 8, and 8 things died, so this becomes a 13 attack weapon. Oh man, that is pretty sick. Obviously, it gets removed with Harrison, stuff like that. 
um, it's not that strong if you really need a body on the board like Tyrion um, it is a strict weapon so there it is uh, it makes Billing Charm pretty strong which I do like a lot all right now we're almost to next Ramus next Ramus is um, introduces one card and the one card here is Death's Head Necromancer uh, 3 mana 2 for it. Requiem, your hero power costs 0 this turn. So if you actually have something else died this turn, um, you can have a free hero power. And um, pretty strong because TET also in introduces the Inspire effect. So if your hero power costs 0, that could be pretty, pretty sick. Kodar Drake, and then infinite ghouls, infinite value. Oh baby. There you go. GVG is um, also out for Death Knights. Uh, we'll just go over these cards as well. Howling Blast is a 1 mana card. Deal 1 damage to all enemies. Then your hero takes the total damage dealt. So it's kind of like a cheaper arcing explosion. But your hero also gets pinged a little bit. Um, maybe the drawback is not too insane. That you want to tech in one card against you know, the Flood Paladin that's happening right now. And of course, it doesn't hurt your board. So it's always a positive effect, even if you have a board. We got the Armored Skull, which is a mech. A Requiem gains plus one health. So it basically starts eating the corpses of your minions that dies. So, you know, some it, it just gain a lot of health. If there is some way to buff the attack of this minion, then it comes really, really strong. But if you play a two, two, uh, turn two, it's just a two, three. So it takes quite a while to ramp up. Harvest! Wow, two mana spell for each minion that died this turn. You put a 1-1 one, one mech ghoul with charge into your hand. And the mech ghoul, as you see on the right side, is basically a stone tusk spore. But the stone tusk spore here is also a mech. So if you have stuff that actually, um, you know... Mm, has mech synergy that you might want to play this and of course charge minions in your hand is always relevant in death knight because you have the requiem effect right so you can always play a requiem effect a minion and then play this card and then it activates immediately so that's pretty cool and of course hand size is always a thing how about playing this with questing adventurer right questing adventurer and then charge 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 buff it up really well there's definitely some things you can do with this card but of course you need to trade a lot it's kind of like the what what um solid vigil it requires a little bit of setup. Blessing of the Lich King. Why take a Blessing of Kings when you can take the Blessing of the Lich King? Let's give a minion plus 5 plus 5 and freeze it. Unfortunately, uh, when you freeze something, um, it doesn't become unfrozen in the start of your next turn as well, right? So you buff something, you need to wait a turn. So buff something and then wait a turn, and then you can attack with it. Uh, that's why it has give plus 5 plus 5. A clutch... Um, in clutch situations, you can also buff your opponent's minion. Um, you know, you can freeze it to stall for one extra turn. You can also buff them up to for BJ's value, but uh, 3 mana, eh, you probably don't want to do that. So, um, a little bit of versatility, but you probably want to buff your own minions. Probably want to buff in the Neurotron. How about turn 2 in Neurotron and then turn 3 buff this? It becomes a 6-7 taunt Divine Shield at turn 3. Oh, I think I like that card. Dark Transformation is also an epic card. You transform a minion into a random minion with one additional cost. Now you can say that, oh, what happens in a castle on a Deathwing? There are no 11 um, mana cost spells, right? Well, if that ever happens, you get a failed experiment because it doesn't exist. And you get bad news, daddy. And it becomes a 1-1. So, insta-kill, I guess, against like stuff like, you know, Frost Giants. Uh, molten giants and stuff like that but obviously you want to use it on your own minions right like for example if you use it on a four drop it comes to five drop and five drops are really really good in this deck in this deck you can also um you know transform your ghouls uh and you get a free two drop uh but it's definitely a tech card so it's an epic card it's something very interesting that you might find useful infinite suppressor a five mana four six so a fine stat line a battle cry, you silence a friendly minion and gain taunt on this creature. So, for example, you can silence this on the Dream, which is like, what, Ancient Watcher? I'm not really sure you can fit all these cards in the Death Knight deck. But, uh, you know, pretty good against, like, an Outdoor Peacekeeper. Um, maybe sometimes silencing a friendly minion doesn't really do anything because all your minions, like, you know, they're just, like, creatures anyways. Um, and this also gains taunt. Uh, mini combo you can do is turn 7, you can use your hero power, attack, and then you can s suppress it. So the 1-1 one, one stays around, and this also gains taunt. So, yeah. 
There you go. If of course, if you can't silence a friendly minion, this does not gain taunt, so it's just a five mana four or six. You can always play it that way. That's completely fine. The first worm automaton is a six mana six six, a uh, pretty strong mech. And when it dies, it freezes all non-mech characters. So it also freezes both faces. It frees your opponent's face. It frees your own face, and it's a mech itself. So. On, in a mech-centric deck, you might want to play this because it's basically a f uh, free uh, Frost Nova when it dies at that point. But of course, it only works when it dies. So you might have to be a little bit more careful when playing with this card. And finally, we have the GVG Legendary. Blood Queen Lanatha. Oh man. 7 mana 6, 5. So the satellite is already a little bit un un underwhelming, so it definitely has to do something good, right? Requiem, deal 2 damage to a random enemy and gain plus 2 health. So she basically starts biting people and, well, basically starts getting out of control if you can't deal with it. How about a turn 7, Blood Queen Lanathel, and if your opponent can't deal with it, you Army of the Dead. And then all the ghouls start dying, and then uh, Blood Queen keeps on paying 2 damage and gaining 2 health, and it becomes a... Uh, I don't know, 6 minions die, so it becomes a 6-16, and it dealt like how much damage? Yeah, something like that. But of course, it needs to survive a turn. A uh, mini combo you can do is like turn, turn 9, you can actually activate it with your hero power. But um, yeah, that's that's like the worst case. The best case scenario, a lot of good things can happen. We have the, um, we're on to BRM now. BRM introduces Obliterate for uh, Death Knights. They don't have a lot of five mana cards. And this is deal five damage to a minion. If that kills it, you gain plus five attack this turn only. So it's kind of like a um, Wind Fury uh, Arcanite Reaper on the same turn. Of course, the second um, part of this can also damage the face if you like. So you can Obliterate a Emperor and also push for five damage if you really want to have a push damage kind of thing. And um, yeah, it doesn't do anything if your opponent has no minions though. So, um, you know, kind of treat it as like a um, multi-shot if you may. And of course, what is BRM without dragons? Uh, Death Knight is getting a dragon as well. It's a 5 mana dragon. Plagued dragon. Battle cry, if you are holding a dragon, discard it and then deal 2 damage to all characters. So it's kind of like you're attaching a abomination effect. Uh, but you can battle cry it, so it's actually obviously stronger than the abomination effect. But you have to discard the dragon when you play this because this is both a body and pretty much a free consecrate if you have it. So uh, would be pretty strong dragon decks. You want to consider, you might want to consider playing dragons in Death Knights. Um, you obviously need this um, to have more dragons to have this work. But uh, you know, a free AOE effect is very very strong. Now of course, uh, onwards to uh, TT. We are gonna sort these cards by rarity, so we're gonna start with the common. We have Pillar of Frost. You freeze both heroes, and then you gain six armor. So kind of like your healing touch or your holy light, maybe. Uh, holy light is uh, heal. It can heal minions, but this is armor. It always works on your face. So if you want to build a freeze death knight, you can because you remember we have Horn of Winter. We have the. Uh, Defile is a very very strong AoE and stuff like that, so maybe you can make a freeze death knight work and just go the combo route instead. We also have Blade Splicer, Inspire, and Requiem. Deal one damage to a random enemy character, so it's super knife juggler in that it actually activates off minion deaths and your hero powers. So if you Blade Splicer and then you use your hero power, it actually juggles two times because, um, you know. You use your hero power, the ghoul is going to die, and the ghoul also itself deals 1 damage. So, um, you know, pretty cool stuff there. Um, you know, making making minions die. Your, your hero power effectively triggers this twice. And the last common we have is Keeper of Bones. 3 mana 2-2, two, two, a battle cry, summon to 1-0 Fragile Skeletons. And Fragile Skeletons only wanted Funnel Cakes. Oh man. Uh, so... Wait a minute. One zero minions just die on the turn they're summoned, right? And yes. So once you play Key for the Bones, you summon two one zeros, they die immediately. So why the heck would you want to play this card? And why the heck is it a two two? Two two means it should be really strong, right? Well, it activates Requiem, right? It activates Requiem two times immediately on your turn. And um, if you have two Requiem effects, then this could become really, really insane. 
So, um, you know, it definitely has a place in your combo decks. And um, if you actually... Oh, you can do cutesy things. For example, if you have a Stormwind Champion, then the Fragile Skeletons actually don't die. You get two ones because the buff is applied like in, in Aura, right? So Fragile Skeletons actually two ones. So that's pretty cool. All right. Uh, onwards to the rare cards. The first rare card is the Iceborne Vanguard. Uh, five mana card. Uh, whenever this minion takes damage, your hero gains that amount in armor. So, um, kind of like a different type of... I can ease your pain. Exactly. <laughs> different type of Mistress of Pain, uh, where, you all, where you gain the armor. And of course, it's damage taken by this minion. So, kind of like Wrath Guard as well, where it can over... Um, where it can go over the value it originally um, has. Uh, and if your opponent... Somehow shield slam this for, I don't know, 50. You get 50 armor. I think that's a pretty good deal. Uh, it does have taunt. So you have to like somehow make this work. You have to trade a lot. I would want to trade a lot of this and gain a lot of armor. Uh, another rare card is Champion of Ner'zhul. Uh, you battle cry, reveal a minion in each deck. And if yours costs more, return a card you played this game to your hand. So you kind of like... It's kind of like a graveyard interaction, right? So, for example, I don't know if you played a, if you played the Death Pact before, and you win the Joust, you might get Death Pact back, and uh, it's a card draw for six mana. Uh, comparable to, um, say the, uh, what? There's a CG card that's a six mana five five that gives you a Paladin card, right? So this is a card draw, but of course you do need to win the Joust. If you don't win the Joust, this is this doesn't do anything. So, um. I don't know. If your card quality is really good and you want to really draw the back, then here you go. You should play this card. And the last rare that we have is Grave Chill. For 4 mana, you silence a minion, deal 3 damage to it, and then freeze it as well. Oh man, that minion is just getting abused. Uh, <laughs> a highly effective uh, Earthshock, like a, a stronger Earthshock. And if you actually don't kill the minion, you get to freeze it as well, so they can't actually attack with it. Um, you know, pretty, um, there's a lot of effects baked in this card. So if you want to silence, if you want to deal 3 damage, and if you want a freeze effect, then this card is for you. It's a whole package. Now, almost to the epic cards, we have the 1 mana accurate card, there's a Dark Fallen. Uh, 1 mana 4-3, oh my god, that is insane, but unfortunately, if another minion dies, this minion dies as well. So if you play this on turn 1, your hero power actually becomes pretty ineffective. You obviously don't want to play any minions with this. And then, so that's why you have to play spells, right? Playing spells at turn 2 might be pretty hard to do. So um, this is an epic. It's kind of, um, you know, it's kind of weird. If you want to do a face death knight, then it, this might be really good, right? If you play this and then your opponent can't deal with it, you, you deal 4 damage and it's a lot of damage. We have a second one, of course. Uh, oh, of course, if you silence this, it becomes pretty good. It's like a little ancient watcher. And the second epic card that we have for TGT is the Sangrin Ritual. It's a 9 mana spell, so you expect something very cool, yes? Deal 1 damage to a random enemy for every minion that died this game. Wow. So, for example, if 20 minions died this game, you deal 20 damage. It's a 20 damage Avenging Wrath. So, Death Knights are, you know, usually kind of treated as like the evil counterpart to Paladin, right? So, you want a lot of things to die if you want to play this card. Two Army of the Deads is probably what you're going to do. But it's a 9 mana spell. This is probably your whole turn. So, um, you know, you kind of have to make this work. And finally, we have the uh, Legendary. Uh, and it's the last card that we made for this concept. Headless Horseman, of course. Uh, I mean, TUT is kind of like the mount theme, and Headless Horseman is effectively a definite as well. That's 7 mana, 3, 9. We don't have the stat line just yet. And at the end of each turn, Joust, and if you win, you summon a 2 2 Squashling. Oh, look at that. Look at, look at the Squashling. It's very, very cute. So it's like a Super Hogger, and it also activates on your opponent's turn. Now, unfortunately, Jousting, in theory, you should only win 50% of the time, right? So, if it activates your opponent's turn, and if it activates on your turn as well, well, it, it effectively only activates on one turn, if it's only 50-50. But then it gets really insane if you keep on winning Joust. And of course, it has a solid body in itself, so it doesn't get like, you know, BGH'd, or it doesn't get like, killed or anything. 
But uh, yeah, definitely a card you might want to consider if you're running across a lot of, you know, hunters, for example. Man, this card is like the dream against the hunter, right? So there you go. That is the Death Knight concept. Uh, let me know which card you think is the best. Which card do you, do you think, uh, you know, might be a bit underpowered. Or maybe you can make a deck with this. I'm not really sure. But um, you can check it out on um, tmarkon.com as well. We have like uh, comments posted, in, of course. Thanks for checking this video out. And um, yeah, when um, when Demon Hunters come up for Legion for WoW, we will be making a Demon Hunter concept as well. That would be awesome. So I'll see you guys in the next concept. All right.